Um, let me get a double low with a side of fries. Hold the fries. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another double low experience. Before this video starts, of course, um, we're gonna bring back an old friend to the channel. Um, he's been waiting on the sidelines, waiting for his moment to shine, and we're gonna bring him back right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back your co-host for tonight. Um, it's of course Abu has returned to the channel. Oh my god, he's falling. <laughs> I'm not gonna break the magic, but I'm gonna really hint at it. Oh, what am I doing on my shoulder? You don't, you don't know. It's fine. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing back the monkey boy himself, Abu. I guess he was an elephant for a while in the film, but um, he's returned to monkey form. Chilling on my shoulder like a good boy he is. Shout out Disneyland Paris for letting me adopt him. I was at brunch in a way. It wasn't really brunch, but it was a brother lunch where actually, you know what? Let me break it down for you because it might get complicated. A brother lunch is essentially when me and my brother get lunch. So yeah, just clarifying for you there if you were confused. But you know, and in this lunch, me and my brother started talking about our childhoods and how grateful we are to our amazing parents, which on the day of recording, I met 34 years ago. So round of applause for them. So well done, uh, mother and father double O, you're doing very well. Let me just tell you that. See, I'm like a father to a boob, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like, oh, he's so cute. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, me and my brother are discussing our childhood. And I was thinking of a core memory from my childhood that can like encapsulate the whole experience, if you will. One of the core memories that I could think of is Thursday fish and chips at my granny's. From P1, which translation for the American audience right here. Um, shout out my American audience, by the way. You're killing it. Love you. You know, it's crazy how large of an American family I have. I love America. I'm an America boo. I had my first Christmas there because I used to live in California. But that's of course a story for another day. Anyway, I'm first Halloween and New Year's. Okay, anyway. <laughs> another very interesting percentage was actually the people not subscribed to the channel who watch. So that's interesting. Hey, if you want to subscribe, that'll be cool. We nearly had 250 subs. Hitting that would be a cool goal. You know, quarter off a thousands. Um, from P1 to S3, because, you know, that's when COVID hit for me. Um, also, translations, don't worry about it. I went every single Thursday to my granny's to get fish and chips after school. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the fish my granny made was second to none okay how she made it so perfect i don't know it was fresh fish from the like local fisherman she would always get lemon sole fish which is the best fish by the way in my opinion she'd bread it and then she'd fry it and you know what it was kind of like a what's comfort panda's dad's name again i believe it's mr ping but i could be wrong on that but i think it is and you know how he has like the whole i guess spoilers for the first movie if you haven't seen it but um he has like the whole like oh it's you gotta believe that special for it to be special i think that's the same thing with my granny's fish it's just normal breaded sole on the outside but it's got love and heart on the inside you know that's why it tastes so good and that's why i don't think i could ever recreate it what else i do on my granny's is either routine every single thursday every this was actually more than thursdays as well sometimes i go tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays like especially at the start of primary school because i don't really have anywhere else to go because both my parents were working because you know at that age you don't really have that many hobbies i'd watch cartoon network so i'd also remember the schedule of what cartoon network showed like what tv shows they showed the first one as soon as i get in a new show or something they were trying to promote so they put it in front of like the good shows that would eventually follow and um, so it was also two, two episodes of each one yeah no one cares about that one i'd have a packet of light salted crisps okay you'll see how healthy i was as a child look at it <laughs> you know i ate so badly as a child but i don't know how i remained so fit i did play a lot of tennis that would get me through the first show and then there'd be an ad break and that's the time where i would get two jab cakes to be honest <laughs> you're always crazy about the jab cakes it used to be two after like a couple years it went up to three and then i went to four and it, it stopped after four but it's just funny like as i grew up i also ate more <laughs> Anyway, I'd had two Jaffa Cakes for the Johnny Test episodes, okay? I didn't eat them during the episodes because I was like, oh, I like the episodes, you know, they're fun. I'd actually eat them during the ads so that I could get through them and enjoy the- Can I enjoy the ads? Because I'd have a snack, you know? That's how my brain worked as a child. <laughs> how can I maximize enjoyment? Okay, Abu, are you gonna- are you gonna behave? Please just sit up, look at me, just- Bro, <laughs> bro is hanging on. How- how is he staying on? That's crazy. It must be Disney magic, actually. That's why. <laughs> so yeah, to get through the ad breaks, I would have my two Jaffa Cakes. And then my granny was perfectly in time every single time. As soon as the first episode of regular show came on, she'd call me and go, right, Owen, dinner's ready. I was always perfectly timed for me to grab the tray. And because I used to eat and watch TV. Oh my God, such a great time. Oh, I used to love my life so much. <laughs> um, so I'd have the most amazing fish with the best TV show in the world. <laughs> like, I loved regular show. I always used to quote the show constantly. That show really influenced me as a kid. <laughs> 
So after the fish, the next step of the routine, the schedule, would be indulging in some quality quality chocolate mousse. And I'd have that um, till the end of the outbreak for a regular show, the second episode to come on. After the chocolate mousse, I'd probably move on to an ice lolly. On the Cartoon Network schedule, the next show would be Adventure Time and then probably move on to sometimes she had like little Haribos in like this very top drawer like it was a drawer that you couldn't fully really open so you know you'd try and like push them to the front and then you could grab the, the Haribos okay for the next Adventure Time and then you know I'd stop eating and then after the two episodes of Adventure Time the next show would be two episodes of Gumball try Darwin by the way Darwin's my favorite character and then after Gumball it'd be another new show actually trying to remember a couple of the new shows they played there was like Over the Garden Wall Uncle Grandpa was one of them Clarence Clarence was a good show I will say like it's kind of weird kind of cursed at some points but good show nonetheless there would be like that Lego Knights one which kind of like was trying to be Ninjago a bit too much there would be actual Lego Ninjago as well would play towards the ends they'd put in like Craig of the Creek and stuff I know in the show it's Craig, but you know I'm Scottish so I'm gonna say Craig. It, it was the Lego Unikitty one. I hate that show. It was always very diverse range of quality. So yeah, had a lot of great memories with my granny. Another thing that reminds me of a big part of my childhood is that I'm going cycling tomorrow around this aisle and this brings me back to how much I used to love cycling around my old neighborhoods, especially the summer between P5 and P6, running outside at like maybe one o'clock, two o'clock, cycling up to my friend's house and then like, you know, knocking on doors, you know, their parents answering to me going, um, is, are they, are they there? Do, do, do they want to come out? And then, you know, they'd come out cycling with me and such a great time. That was a lot of great summers doing that. But yeah, especially the P5 to P6 one, because I was actually gonna be moving schools after that summer. So, so I tried to spend as much of my time with my old friend group. It was quite sad as well, because I could never do that with my new friends I made at my new school. Because a lot of them, we lived miles away from each other. So being pretty much in the same neighborhood. I don't know if this is legal actually, but you know, I was like 10, but I used to like have my phone recording and then like cycling along as well. So it's like one hand cycling while recording, like just my friends talking, making jokes and stuff. Oh, such a good time. That was like my first time ever like vlogging, you know? Yeah, because I vlog. I'm a vlogger, by the way. <laughs> one of the activities we used to get up to was variations of the ding dong ditch. I would never do this, obviously, because I've actually been a good boy since day one. But my friends used to, I don't know what it was called, gnoming, I think. <laughs> I think it was like something like gnoming or like bushing or something where essentially you'd ring the doorbell and then you just lie flat on the floor. That was that was the bushing one or like you pretended to be a bush in the, like the front garden. So as like the owner would open the house, they'd just see this random kid, like nine year old, 10 year old, just lying flat in their garden. I feel like those times were the first times I ever felt secondhand embarrassment. I, I would just cycle away because I could not even watch it from afar because it was just so embarrassing. It was just so awkward, but so funny at the same time. Obviously, you had the classic Ding Dong Ditch gnoming where you just stand at the end of the garden, just like, you know, I'm a gnome. <laughs> like, pretending you were a gnome, like, which would of course never work, but it was very funny to look back on. I especially remember the last week of summer for me. They had all started school a week before me. So when we would go out that last week of my summer, they'd be telling me all the stories of like what's happening, like the new people had joined. So that was a very sad week for me, but also like we had the best time. We'd go out for hours and hours. And I remember the last day before I started my new school, we probably went, we were probably cycling around for like six hours, seven hours. That was a great time as well, because that one we had a quite a big group with us. I remember doing like ding dong ditch on this one girl's house who, who we actually went to school with and she had this really long driveway. The thing is as well, it wasn't just like a long, you could like go all the way around and then you had to run all the way back, which was completely exposed. It was, it was very risky, okay? <laughs> I remember them playing rock versus scissors to that, just cracking up. I don't even know if she was in or like her family was even in, but it was just the idea that if they were and like seeing my friend run all the way around. I mean, to be honest, we were like 10 years old, so you can't really blame us for, you know, being a little bit naughty. We did so much stuff with that last day. We basically covered every street in both my neighborhood and their neighborhood. We even went up the woods and stuff, which is actually where I filmed the forest. But yeah, we did so much, so much to the point where I didn't have a watch, my watch on me, and my phone actually died because I was recording. So I had no idea what the time was. And my mother got quite mad at me because <laughs> I showed up quite late and she'd ordered pizza. <laughs> so I had to eat quite cold pizza, but you know, I think it was worth it. Do you know how those last meaningful memories of my um, old friends who some of them I've not seen since that day um, Abu do you have any final notes for us? Mm-hmm Mm-hmm mm -hmm. Okay, well to be honest Abu, I don't really care who necessarily wins like Drake or Kendrick I'm just enjoying the music, you know? 